Hello friends, welcome to Final Files and episode number I think is part number five of Autopsy Simulator and chapter four. Without further ado, let's continue exactly where we left off last time. The end of chapter three. Chapter four. Here we go. Are you ready for this? Just to move in and live here. I doubt I'll get reimbursed for the cab. <laughs> Can we start at our job? Not at home. Huh? Huh? What's that banging? Comes from over here. Hey! Hello? How was he over here? Who was in the in the dumpster then? Hello? Are we going are we going insane? Or could that have been have been could that have been Red Pete? Uh, it's already late in the evening. Do we are supposed to follow? Or are we just brushing it off? I can't sprint, so this is as fast as it goes. Did you go in here? No? Hello? Pete? Okay. Guess we can't follow him. Ah, must have been nothing. Let's go to work. We have probably some dissecting to do. Hello, Ridley. Good evening. Any news for me? Mm hmm. About my car? You know, the flat tires? No. No. What? <laughs> Check the cameras. No. Anything? Handman, I cut my teeth working in prison. I know what to do. But there were no strangers hanging around. Maybe you ran over something. But all four what? tires? All the tires? Why, possibly. You can congratulate yourself. Ah, uh, Christ. You should try sleeping more. You're of no help, of Ridley. Lately. That's the first bit of sense you've made all evening. Good. The body is expected to be ready for pickup tonight, along Yay. with your lecture. What? What did no one? You still pontificating? Best hurry, don't you think? This is Red Pete. Ah, oh, fuck me! I don't have the strength for this today. Yep. Oh. Definitely need our pills. Have I taken my pills today? Did I take it? Or... Like every day. Uh, one more won't hurt. Oh, let's do the pills. Let's pop it. Don't have much time for what? Okay. For okay. the work ahead. I one guess. My one, Jack. T -t -t Take it easy. Oh, a burning issue indeed. Then I'll move on to the body. Oh, Why is the body laying like this? I almost forgot. I'm gonna need the camcorder. Why is the body laying like that? This. Body has been laying around for some time, you know. Since it's all stiff in that position. Uh, this is making me nervous. Our storage here. Let's get the camera. Wherever it is, here. Let's Oh. Excuse me. Let's set it up and begin dissecting this thing. Looks like he has been severely burned or something. Right? 
I guess we'll find out today. Oh, well. Start recording. This is not the best framing. What do you mean? Hello, everyone. It's the 20... <clears throat> something of uh, November 1991. Jack Hanlon is uh, conducting, conducting the autopsy. Oh. We are getting more and more distressed. I uh, appear to be missing my gloves and apron. We are losing it, I'm telling you. Yes, um, uh, you... Well, you already know the drill, so, uh, the body is on the slab. Let's see what the police uncovered first. So, the victim is from yesterday's apartment block fire on Grounder Street. Personal details unknown. Let's check them out. The exact cause of the fire has not yet been determined. However, it is known that the fire started in the deceased's apartment, where the most damage was reported. The body was not found until the next morning. The tenant was naked, charred, and with severe burns. The owner of the apartment asked about the deceased. He was surprised anyone even lived there. Okay. The deceased was sitting in an armchair near the TV. Pieces of pornographic material, an ashtray, melted video cassettes, and several bottles of so-called poppers were found in the vicinity. It's difficult to assess whether any escape attempts were made. Firefighters indicated that it was probably the large quantity of poppers found near the deceased and rapid spread of the fire. <clears throat> he liked well, that's men. A basic question. I think whether the death occurred as a result of fire or whether he was dead before it. And poppers. That's that. It's a liquid that you you don't drink it or anything. You just sniff the fumes. I think yeah. I think I heard of it before. As you can see, the body is in quite an unusual pose. No for shit. For the purpose of photographic documentation, we'll leave it like that for now. Oh, trusty Pol Polaroid. Uh, why can't I snap a photo? Isn't it always from the head? From the head down? No, not this time. This I guess. position is called the pugilistic attitude. <coughs> this is due to the influence of high temperature on the muscles. Let's find markers. Oh, maybe too much zoomed in. The fire reaches the skin first. And the soft tissue really until the skeletal muscles are exposed <clears throat> yeah so kind of wound the here regulation occurs in exposed muscles due to their fibers shrinking the extensors yield to the force of the flexors Muscles contract and contract until the limbs become flexi and deformed. Flexi and deformed. Okay. Whatever that means. The upper ones are characterized by a triple bend, similar to a boxer holding his hands in front of him. I have no clue what this guy is talking about. <laughs> I am not an autopsist. Just ten minutes will do it. Ten minutes. For the muscles and tendons to contract like a steak on the grill. Is there any more we can see from this angle? No. Maybe I have something on his back. There's one more photo we have to to snap. I can't seem to find out where. Huh?
What's the last thing I have to photograph? Come on now. Oh. Okay, the neck. In the end, we're all just walking meat. That's right. And now we hang the pictures on here, the board. Okay, no remarks. <coughs> The deceased must now be straightened out, and we need to get rid of these bindings. He looks to have been tied up in a rather unusual way. The deceased's neck and feet were most likely secured to his hands, and these were probably tied in front and around the crotch level. Okay. Which explains why, despite the severe burns, the deceased's limbs are not all that twisted. Uh-huh. Now, perform the autopsy. Uh, that's better. It's easier to straighten him now. Without taking out the magnifying glass, we already know that the deceased's skin is heavily charred and cracked. No shit. Inspect the areas of concern with the magnifying glass. Will do. As for the other details... Hmm. There are crow's feet visible near the eyes. Upper lip reveals front teeth. One of the incisors is broken. There's soot in the nostrils. Yep. The rope around the neck wasn't very tight. I don't see it leaving a mark on the skin. Okay. You can clearly see that this is primarily the front of the deceased that was exposed to fire. The victim sat in the chair the whole time, hence his back being in much better condition than this extremely burned area. The rope marks around the wrists are deep and clearly visible. Must have been tight. Looks as if a large flap of skin had detached from the calf. Oh. The rope at the man's ankles was tied much tighter and more precisely than the one around his wrists. Why? All in all, quite a lot can be deduced from this external examination. Highlight the previously found wounds on the clipboard mannequin. Traces failed to indicate that the deceased suffocated before the fire took hold. Oh, that must That's have been lucky. terrifying. Severe burns, covering approximately 80% of the epidermis. That must be the most painful way to die, yeah? Burning. But luckily, uh, luckily, I don't, know if, I don't know if it's luck, but... Normal, normally. You suffocate first, you know, before the fire it's takes hold. Loosely tied. However, this is the result of the corpse drying out. The wound shows that the rope had deeply imprinted itself in the tissue. Uh, predominance of fourth and third degree burns. The length of the rope was calculated, and appears that the deceased could make limited movements around the perineum. The burns reach through the dermis and hypodermis to reach the muscles. The body is covered in numerous areas. Uh, should be some more spots here. Uh, the eye oh, okay. is a natural reaction of the body to high temperatures. Soot in the nose appears when inhaling harmful and choking smoke. The tissue of the mouth was heavily burned as well. The teeth, however, makes me wonder. The conclusions are quite clear. He burned to death? Or he choked first? It looks like the deceased was a fan of choking while masturbating. Deaths due to a predilection hmm. for asphyxophilia do occur. 
but not in this case. The extent of the thermal stresses on the body could have caused this death. Wounds on the wrists and ankles indicate that the deceased could have been struggling in panic. Burns to the genitals and groin are an additional concussive factor. This is due to the high vascularity and innervation of this area. So many fancy words. <laughs> the mixture of fear, sexual arousal, and drugs could have caused a heart attack. In this case, I don't assume that this was a delayed death. It may seem incidental, but for us it's a sign that the deceased was most certainly conscious. We need to check that the damage inhaling all that smoke has done to the respiratory tract. Perhaps the deceased lost a tooth attempting to bite through the rope. I will assess the extent of possible poisoning and burning in a moment. First, I'll try to establish the victim's identity. Due to the amount of charring, we are unable to collect the victim's fingerprints. Visual identification is also out of the question. You can probably guess what options we are left with, hmm? You guessed it. A dental impression. For this, I need impression trays and alkanate material. Please excuse me for a moment. What I need should be somewhere in the lab. Let's head to the lab then. So I can take some dental imprints. Ugh. Okay, it's going well. I should be able to get this done in time. Uh, where are these trays? I don't Tons, know. Papers, jars? Nope. It's not anywhere on the counter. Maybe in this drawer. Oh, there they are. And huh, a surprising amount of ready-made alkanate. How lucky. This up in my hands. Make a cast of the teeth. Don't mind if I do. Okay. Making an impression is quite simple. You put trays with alkanate into the mouth and press them together in one firm movement until you feel significant resistance. Let's do it then. Once the devices have been placed... <sighs> uh, apologies. They cannot be adjusted. Okay. Again, we will need a piece of paper, a brush, and ink. We will make a plaster model of the deceased's teeth from the obtained impression. We will then make an impression of the mold on a piece of paper, which will be scanned into the computer. And hence, we will get the identity. Approach the tray with the cast. This tray? Guess so. Brush the entire cast with pigment. Uh, you see, oh. it seems <laughs> so simple and yet laborious. He's sighing a lot. Ah. Take the imprint using the tracing paper. On the plus side, we don't have to worry about the gag reflex with the deceased. And no need to remind the subject to breathe either. At <laughs> least he saved the high cost of orthodontic treatment. Got the imprint. Now let's scan it. And I guess check the computer. Match the bite mark in the criminal database. Expected a match so soon. Well, the deceased Richard is Jacobson. Richard Jacobson, 47 years old. He had a criminal record and was recently in court for. Oh, wow. For not returning a videotape to the rental shop. What? Oh, Jesus. I better check if I've still got that copy of What a criminal, man. Uh, where were we? I didn't return a tape. What's wrong with you, man? What's going on in this world? <laughs> okay, I'll add some details to the clipboard. Return to the autopsy. Okay, and we can move on to dissecting the body. 
Yay. This time, That's the fun part. Straight for the loppers. Let's find the loppers. I'll slice it I guess piece by cut piece. them open. Let me start here. I push hard several times. Until I cut it's pretty awesome with these mini games, you know. Even though they're simple, it's a little more immersive, you know. You're actually doing something, not just point and click. You can see that using a scalpel would be pointless here. Oh, okay. If you say so. And the last bit. Just like so. Oh, solid crunch. That was not the last bit. Uh, two more. Almost there. And the last one. Now we peel back the skin. Yay. Let's see what he looks like. Looks like. On the inside. Now to remove the ribs. The loppers again. And we can check out what's going on in here. Oh, look at this and charred lungs. A lot has happened. Uh, in fact, the entire abdominal cavity is flooded. Blood and other fluids have seeped from the blood vessels, flooding the abdomen and chest areas. We have to get rid of this. Uh, I'll. Go Find the ladle. A ladle. Find the ladle in the lab. Look at all the fluid inside of him. Holy mother of air fryers. I think I saw one somewhere here. Oh, ladle, where are you? Where uh, are you? Uh, I don't have all night. I'm going to need a vacuum pump. Uh, right. Uh. And for everything <laughs> starts again. Uh, why can't things be tidied away properly in this damn mortuary? Ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> I wonder what this pump is. Damn, he's sighing a lot. Basement. Ah. 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 Let's go talk to Ridley. Mr. Ridley, are you in there, sir? Mr. Ridley. Mr. Ridley, he's I'll gone. Let's go to the basement and check. That Ridley guy, I think he's. He has something to do with all this. He's one of my main suspects. You know. Is he working with Red Pete? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Ah, uh, jeez. I don't know what. <laughs> Come on. Come on, you weak ass autopsy. God. <laughs> Check the basement uh, for the bomb. This infernal machine. And who to who let the lights on in here? Who left the lights on? Who? 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 Here it is. Wow, that's heavy. Can I fit through the door with this? Let's find out. Uh, I swear I'm going uh. to have an accident here <laughs> one day. Uh, like Alice. When she twisted her ankle on those stairs. <sighs> we were supposed to go to the mountains then. It was supposed to be our first trip since... <sighs> oh, I don't know how long. I had so much work on my mind. That... And Alice. Handman. Because of me. As always, she had to... Handman, are you talking to yourself or what? Huh? I'm thinking. What? No, I, I just... There is a letter for you. I left it on your desk. A letter? letter? For me? Yes. Letter for you. Do I have to repeat myself again? Uh, no. Thank you. What's with that for attitude, you. man? 
I was looking for you earlier. Ugh. Ken, I was retrieving your letter. Jesus, Ridley. You had to talk to me like a human being from time to time. I'm just answering the question. Right. <laughs> oh, by the way, the basement hatch is wide open. Maybe you could look into it? Hmm? Maybe. He's reading about Red Pete. Red Pete on the loose. A letter. Fuck. Who delivers letters Fuck. this time? <laughs> it's probably been sat in his office for ages. Just didn't want to move his lazy ass. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> we have the equipment. Now I have to place it somewhere close to the table. Like this one? Phew. I can finally put this thing down. All right, just... What? There's no tube? No one's used this for a long time. Where's the I tubes? I apologize to you all once again. <laughs> Should you go read that letter? See who's it from? The office. Can we read it now? Do we have to? They definitely pay me too little for this. Where's the letter? Said it was in my office. In the drawer. Aha. Uh -huh. Three, six, four, nine. Okay. Huh? What's that code for? Three, six, four, nine. Three, six, four, nine. Three, seven, four, nine. Uh, three, seven, nine, four? <laughs> three, six, four, nine, dude. Yeah, I don't see a letter in here. Let's head to the social room. These lockers uh. contain everything we need, <laughs> or simply filled with people's crap. Locate the padlock code to get inside the locker. Oh, what was it again? There might be something in Four, here. six, seven, yeah. nine. I'm sure I wrote the code down on a piece of paper. I think yeah. Four, six, seven, nine. No. Not it. <laughs> four six nine seven. Four six no. Oh. Three six four nine. I was way off. <laughs> Thirty six forty nine. Thirty six forty nine. I was way off. Thirty-six, four nine. Me and my memory for numbers. Yeah, uh, mine what too. Do we have here boxes of disinfectants, syringes, thread. Oh, some small trinkets, accessories. Rummage through the box. Uh, maybe I should take it to the office. Antiseptics, any other stuff? Here's the tubes. Oh, that's interesting. About here. It's a book. Uh, why can't I put it away? Oh, I wanted to forget. Oh, Alice. Oh, Alice. Day. I can't. I can't take it anymore. Oh, God. Oh. Answer the phone in Jack's office. Forget the Alice for now. Alright. You're better off. <coughs> oh, 
Hello? of the medical examiner, Beatsville. Oh, Jack. I was hoping to catch you at work. <clears throat> uh, hi, uh, Dorothy. Uh, how... Uh, how's it going? Good, good, thanks. Who's Dorothy? Uh, what about you? You sound tired. Uh, I, uh... A uh, sister-in-law is Charlotte. So who's uh, this? Tiring day at work. That's it. You scared me last time we spoke. Uh, I'm sorry. I, uh... I didn't want to cause any trouble. And I don't remember who this is. <laughs> Jack, it's all right. You're not <coughs> causing any trouble. I'm is not this the reporter? That. No, no, really. I mean it. Sorry. I, I just. No, I'm fed up with myself. You should take care of yourself. Didn't you say you wanted to stay at home longer? To rest? You know I pick up the slack at work. No, I didn't. I can't. I don't want to be there. Well, uh, why not consider taking a trip, Jack? It's a good Dorothy, idea. Please, I really don't have the energy for this today. No, I just wish. Stop it. Uh, why are you calling? Reminder about annual drug testing. I thought. I figured you probably didn't remember. Oh, yes. I've uh, had a lot going on. I uh, even forgot my own birthday. <laughs> Leave your samples at reception on your way home. Someone will pick them up from Ridley in the morning. Probably Steven or someone else at the station. Sure. I'll try not to forget. Okay, well, uh... Jack? Hmm? Try not to do anything stupid, okay? Alcohol, okay. your medication... You know you shouldn't. I have it all under control. Uh, I should be getting back to She work. thinks I'm going to the commit suicide? Tomorrow. I'll call you when we know. Right. Thanks. Goodbye, Jack. We are not committing suicide. We are not quitter. Annual drug testing. I'll take care of it before I go home. Uh, I feel terribly weak. Uh, wake up, Jack. Uh, Jesus. Uh, uh, I need my pills. More pills? Come on, dude. There's been a bit too much going on lately. Uh, maybe you should not the hose. eat the pills of those clothes that you have been rummaging through a corpse with. <laughs> Just, you know, a little advice. advice. Ah, oh, here you are. Here's the tubes. Focus on your work, Jack. Attach the hose to the machine. <clears throat> All right. Here I am. I hope that was the last long break in this session. So, let's connect the tube. Set the pump to full speed. Crank it up and power. We turn on the machine. Electric suction device. With this amount of fluid, there's no point in holding back. Suck it up. Turn to the corpse. Get it all up. Still a few nooks and crannies left. External examinations did not reveal any tissue defects that would reach the internal organs. So I expect the organs to be intact. Is that all? No? It's a little more here. In a way, a little it's pool quite of blood. extraordinary. Jeez, there's a lot of it. That even with such severe burns, skin, fat, muscles, baritone. 
The organs are all present and correct. A reddish pink tint indicates high carboxyhemoglobin levels, the level of which I will determine from a sample of blood. Select a syringe and obtain two samples for toxicology testing. I will be inserting syringe. needles into the heart and femoral artery. Let's do it then. What interests me here is not the presence of this substance itself, but rather its percentage content of the sample. But first, I'll need the values for the centrifuge. Oh no, not the centrifuge. <laughs> we will have some trouble with the lights. I'm going to turn on centrifuge. <coughs> I feel like I've been here forever. Just got there. Jack, focus. Just a little bit longer. Use the centrifuge. From the site of fire may have very different and complex histories. Burning is only at the surface. Underneath, it may be a heart attack, stroke, or pulmonary embolism. I guess we'll find out. This particular case appears quite basic. Set the correct values on both dials and start mixing. Let's find out. Uh, yeah, this is what we are looking for. 10 minutes at 85%. 10 minutes at 85%. Start centrifuge. However, I would warn against making a diagnosis too hastily. Will the light flicker? Death due to smoke inhalation. Yes? No? Maybe? Maybe we're lucky again this time. The centrifuge has completed its cycle. Take the samples. So, as usual, I will take the samples to the laboratory. And I'll be back with the results shortly. Do it. Place the samples in the rack. Ugh. What exactly was I supposed to test for? Chromocyclobin? Or something like that? <laughs> COHB. Ugh. Yeah. That too. Take the pipette and set it to draw two milliliters of fluid. I'll take two milliliters of huge sample. Set it to two. Remove the pipette. And release. Ugh. Set the pipette again for four milliliters. Take another sample. And release. Place the collectors collect the sample into the chromatograph. Will do. Check the results. Well, confirmed. Death due to carbon monoxide poisoning. Carboxyhemoglobin levels at 84%. All right. I'll note this down and perform a check of the organs. Begin a thorough heart analysis by examining the organ. What? What? Where? Mr. Ridley? Huh? What? Can we... The camera's still recording. Watch the video. See, Ridley. Did he take that fucking body. What? Is there Ridley? Why did you take the body? What body? 
Well, what the body? body? You know, from the <laughs> autopsy room? Christ, him. I didn't take any of your bodies. <laughs> so who took it? I have no idea what you're talking about. But, but I the body's gone. Back to work is late. But the, but the body is gone, Mr. Ridley. Hello? Is it in here? Something. Something strange is happening here. What? What's going on? Huh? There was a Did brain in here just thing? before. What? What's going on? We are going What's insane. Wrong with me? We go mad. The body is back. Oh, I don't understand what's going on. Take some pills, dude. It's a good idea. <laughs> Guess the body is back in here now, then. Yeah. I saw. I think there's. What's that music? From the results. What's that music for? <laughs> we can now be sure what? that the carboxyhemoglobin concentration was fatal. Oh. I think I should inspect the heart. The organ has a reddish pink tint, which results from the concentration of COHB and general congestion of the organ. Other than that, I can cross this off my list now. It was not heart attack. Gas poisoning? Maybe. We'll look at the lungs more carefully. From the outside, just like the heart, it is congested, and the color indicates poisoning. Thermal damage is visible here and there. Here, there, and everywhere. Enough of the external exam. It's time to grab the knife and dissect the lungs. I need to check for any obstruction, burns, or clots. It's dissected. Uh, Jesus. Uh, careful. Careful. Carefully cutting the lungs. All right. You can see changes in the lung parenchyma caused by burns and smoke inhalation. Nothing new here. Or there. Or anywhere. Turn to the autopsy. So let's complete the notes. And let's check the trachea. Oh. The trachea is where we found our wives, our late wives, ring, and the last corpse. The color is the same as the rest of the organs. Significant congestion. Let's see what it looks like inside. Let's cut it open. Burns no ring inside, this time. But what catches the eye the or most any other object is the amount of soot. Uh, looks like our subject was in the thick of the fire. Let's deal with the final notes, and we're ready to go. Let's deal with the final notes, and we're ready to go. I consider the direct cause of death to be severe carbon monoxide poisoning, leading to extreme hypoxia of the body. Gas poisoning. The extreme burns of the deceased's body and respiratory tract 
indicate that he must have been surrounded by fire. No Fair shit, we know that. No other factors were found that could have contributed to the victim's death. Environmental data does not indicate any third party involvement. So it must be an accident then. Just need to add my John Hancock and sew up the body. There we go. I'll close the body, trying not to damage what's left of the skin. As for stitching, well, it varies. It can be that the fire victims are in such a condition that there is nothing left to stitch. I think we can stitch so this, this one job, up. A thicker needle and heavy duty thread. Wouldn't it be easier using, you know, a clamp? Stitching? holding together. Keeping it together is invaluable in this line of work. <laughs> <laughs> you are not very good at keeping it together, dude. Well, after storing the body, there's nothing left for me to do. But thank you for your attention. All the best and good night. And oh, you're done. Oh my God, what an exhausting day. Ugh. I need to get these gloves off and call a taxi. I swear I'm about to pass out from exhaustion. Yeah, let's get home. Get some sleep. Oh, fuck. You're in sample. Oh, no. Uh, okay, quick. I think I have a container in the lab. I have one right here. Okay, this is it. Prepare a urine sample in the bathroom. mind if I do. There we go. Ready for Dorothy. I'm dehydrated. I should drink more water. Give your sample to Ridley. Mr. Ridley! I have something tasty for you. Huh? Ridley? Are you alright, dude? As expected, sleeping like a log. Oh, With his goodness. eyes wide open? Ridley! Let's call the taxi and get the uh. hell out of here. What? Hello? Fuck. What's going on here? We're going insane. Holy toaster, man. Hurricane taxi, we will take you wherever the wind takes you. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, hello. I would uh, like to order a taxi to 574 Presley Street. Okay, hun. Uh, all of our drivers are busy at the moment. Best I can do why is within why the are you next speaking hour. like that? An hour? Oh no. Uh, 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 let it be. Can I take your name? Let it be. Yeah, let it okay, be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Would you like to set one up? Speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. Would that make the taxi get here faster? Well, I thought so. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, this is already giving me a headache. At home? We have to oh, wait for Jesus, taxi. What now? Yes, how can I help you? Jack. Jack. Alice? Why what? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why what? did you do that? What did I do? Oh my god! What was Alice? that? Alice? What is going on? Fuck. What's going on? It's because of the fatigue. Must be. It's because of the fatigue. You're going Until fucking mad. I calm myself down. Oh, we are just taking more and more pills for every day. This was some kind of mistake. Pills and some whiskey. An hour here. I need a drink. <laughs> Gone completely insane. Oh, strong. He's strong. A 
everything's spinning. I'll lay down. With your gloves and apron on. <laughs> Oh, we're dreaming again. Another nightmare. Huh? Some weird shit going on. Help me. Drowning in a sea of blood. That was it for chapter four. And we are getting. We're going insane. We go mad. Wow. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so I don't miss chapter five. Thank you all for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.